Good afternoon. Welcome to another EEAP safety presentation. I'm Rick Roman. And my name is Michael Crowley. And today we are going to be discussing the lockout tagout. Um, as always, I will remind you that up in the upper right hand corner you can uh, type in any questions that you have along the way. You do not need to wait until we get to the questions and answer portion, but we will address all the questions at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in our overview here, we're going to be talking about what it means to lock out, tag out, the equipment and industries lock out, tag out applies to, why almost every company should implement a lock out, tag out program, and the key elements to an effective lock out, tag out program. So what is lock out, tag out? It's a procedure that prevents the inadvertent starting or movement of parts of machinery and equipment. It must be employed by anyone who adjusts, cleans, installs, operates, repairs, or dislodges jammed machinery or equipment. It sounds pretty basic, but, but sometimes the problem is people don't understand exactly how detailed this law can get. And that's why we're doing this webinar today, to kind of go over things and let you know that it's just not for massive machines or, or extra large companies with huge, huge processes going on. So to break it down and get to the specifics of it, the lockout means that the machinery or equipment has been secured by disengaging the power source and blocking or locking the movable parts to prevent injury from inadvertent or unexpected movement. And this is a tricky process because if you've got a machine that has a lot of rollers or a, a lot of gears and a lot of pinch points, when your maintenance people take off the guards to do work on there, they, they need to have a series of different items that could necessarily be able to lock and tag it out. So most people, when they think about lock and tag out, they think of the bottom picture there on the right, on the left side, where there's a standard lock and there is a tag that dangles, and that's pretty standard. But you might need some other things. For example, top uh, the picture on the top left, that is something that might cover the outlet. So if it's a drill press, if it's uh, uh, a machinery that is just plugged in in any sorts, you might have a series of these lock boxes that go over the outlets, uh, the, the plug, so that you can lock that out. Uh, the picture on the bottom right are, um, are uh, springs and screw uh, brackets that you can put in under a machine if, if it's hydraulically moved while the machine is enacted or you have to operate or work on the machine while it is in, in, a, in a compressed or energized state, you can put some sort of mode to block out that process so that it doesn't uh, break down and injure you while you're doing maintenance on it. So, so in addition to having uh, to disengaging the power source and making it to where somebody couldn't accidentally turn it on, as Mike mentioned, there are going to be instances maybe with a forklift where the forks, when they're lifted up and you're doing some works, works on there, that they're, they're being held by the hydraulics, so now you would need something to hold it in place so it doesn't doesn't fall on you. And that's right, Rick. That's the exact the kind of thing we're, we're looking at. So uh, you, you should take a look on Google if you need some ideas when a locking out this kind of machine, and you'll find a lot of interesting pictures on Google. Okay, and tag out, as we mentioned, that's the second part. So in addition to locking the, the device out, it needs to be tagged so that people will know that the, the equipment is being uh, adjusted or cleaned or maintenance is being performed. So tagged out means that a tag has been placed on the controls of the power source of the machinery and equipment that indicates it is prohibited to restart or operate the machinery or the, the, the equipment during the servicing or repair. Taking responsibility for who is actually tagging this out and stopping the operation of this machine is vitally important. And so you'll see on the tag we have the front part that they can have remarks. You can put the duration of the job or when it should be unmarked. But really your, your key spot is to make sure people know who is the person they need to go to if they have questions about utilizing or working on the machine. And that really is the, the key spot to the tags. I know that some people go the extra mile and take pictures and put their their tags on the picture, I think that's great, but it's not required and it can become a little cumbersome. Sometimes people just use the generic tags like the one we have here and you just write the name of the person who locked it out. And that's very efficient and easy to do. 
And, and as it says on the tag there, it's very important that the same person that is applying the locks and the tags is the same one that is removing them so that we can make sure that, that the process is complete, that things have been inspected, and that they're ready to be re-engaged so that when we take this off and, and start the machinery up, we know that everything's going to be good to go. That's right. So what equipment needs lockout tag out? Well, this is the this is where it gets a little bit tricky in, in making those determinations. Now, now it says here that any equipment that is energized by any means either mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, electrical, thermal, etc., which covers just about any type of tool that you can imagine. So I'll let Michael elaborate a little bit on this as to the types of equipment that you would want to, to apply this to and what types of industries may typically use those types of equipment and some who might not normally think that this would apply to them and how, how they might want to consider the, the, the program. Well, you know, the code that Rick's got right there is completely right out of the OSHA code book. And so that is pretty, pretty vague. Any equipment that is energized by means, and then they give you every way in the world they could be energized, it needs to be locked and tagged out. So let me start on the, on the far left. That machine is a hydraulic press. Obviously, that needs to have a lockout tagout program. Uh, the, the one on the top in the middle on the top row, this is a, a bandsaw. And, and, and most people say, well, if I need to change the blade, do I really need to lock it out? And this is one of those machines that does. You should be unplugging it from the wall and putting a box around it so it doesn't get turned on while you're in the process of changing the blade. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things that people will talk about saying, well, what if it only takes me a couple minutes? And I'm right there. And, and what I'm saying to you is, you're many times you're going to do these machines like the skill saw, change the blade, do things, and you are not going to be, you're not going to have any injuries. But the reality is this: if you get injured by these machines in the process of maintaining them, what you will get hit with is an eighteen thousand to twenty-five thousand dollar penalty for not locking and tagging out these machines, because it doesn't just say big machines. Uh, bottom row, you'll see the drill press. The bands uh, at the top of the drill press. A lot of the time, these guys will just pop the lid, start working on it, and uh, they get interrupted. They don't finish the job, and uh, what will take place, somebody will come and start to restart it, and it'll be a problem for them. Middle picture is a commercial oven. And these kind of ovens where you're working in, you need to be able to make sure that they aren't going to automatically turn on or somebody could invertly turn them on or get somebody trapped inside. Uh, not to get into details about anybody in particular, but there are a lot of times people get stuck in these kinds of machines and do have problems by getting cooked. So you need to make sure your lockout tagout program has to do with maintaining uh, acknowledging to the other employees that you are going to be working on this to stay out. You're going to be doing test runs and that. Uh, the, the backhoe picture is uh, just a funny picture we put in there, but is very real. A lot of times people will do weird and crazy things to be able to work on underneath the machine. Now, these guys are just taking a break, which is insanity, but the reality is sometimes people will lift a forklift with another forklift so that they can work on it. Some people will uh, raise the forks to a forklift and then they got to work on something underneath and that has hydraulic pressure that if it gives way you could be injured and so even though the picture is nuts just know that it is in real terms uh, something that happens a lot when it comes to people trying to use the machine itself to raise it to do maintenance on it in some fashion and, and, and one of the key points here to think about is as Michael was saying with some of these things is where you're going to get hit with it is if you ever have an injury. So is Cal OSHA going to come in and when you talk about how th this basically covers any type of electrical or mechanical equipment that you would have, Cal OSHA is not going to come into your place uh, of business for a, another issue and then say I want to see your lockout tagout program because they see an electric pencil sharpener. But in the case of a skill saw or other tools, if you've got equipment that people could legitimately possibly get injured while working or repairing uh, with these tools, uh, then you, you really want to have these programs in place because that's when you're going to get nailed is when the injury occurs and then they're going to come in and they're going to want to see if you have the lockout tag out in place. You are correct, Rick. You are correct. Okay, so why do we want to implement a lockout tagout? Well, that picture looks like a good reason, Rick. Yes, it is. So, so the primary reason is is that 
obviously you want to send your employees home safe to their families every night. You want to avoid these types of injuries. Um, and, and these are devastating types of injuries that can occur from these. You see the top picture on the right there, that's a, a, an arc flash and th that could literally kill somebody. So we're talking about injuries that, that could maim people to severe degrees and, and even kill them. So, so that's your, your number one reason why you would want to do it. But if, if you look in the lower left there, you'll see um, in the number eight slot there, that's uh, last year of the top ten most cited standards, and lockout tagout is number eight. That lockout tagout is consistently in the top ten most cited, uh, both on the federal and the Cal OSHA side, uh, one of the most cited standards. And it is. You, you're going to find that this lockout tagout, a lot of times people won't really understand or they don't want to get behind it or they don't know how simple it is to comply. Uh, getting your program up to speed is no problem because you, you probably are already a client of EAP and you have the program. There's some forms that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but when it comes down to the injury of the hand, you, you're, you're talking about maiming somebody for life if you don't do this in the right order. And so this is heavily cited. It has uh, great, great effects to an employee that goes bad with by either killing them or maiming them or losing the hand. And it really can happen in a lot of different ways. So if you do have a machine right now that you're thinking about wondering if it needs to be locked out, tagged out, then uh, you should be typing that question in into the question and answer box so that we can see that ahead of time and kind of get some answers for you in, the, in, in, the, uh, in this question and answer period. So what are the key elements to an effective lockout tagout program? Well, the first point, Rick, is going to be the written program. You've got to have a written program, and EEAP provides that to you. Your program will look something, the cover sheet should look something like this in your client center login. And if you don't have one or you're one of the few guests that we invite that aren't clients of ours just yet, you can call us and we can uh, help you with that. But all in all, if you go to your client center, you'll see that written program, and it needs to meet the exact code that comes out of Calosha with the specifics that need to be addressed. The next one is the individual equipment that locked out tag out procedure forms. That form is going to be halved at the bottom there. You can see the top half. The bottom half is, a ba is basically 10 blank lines that you can write down the individual steps yourself. But the top part is the most important part when it comes to helping us defend you from Cal OSHA. A lot of times your companies will know already what they need to do to lock and tag it out. That's not usually the problem. Your, your maintenance people and are usually intelligent enough to know that. The key aspect is to be able to to name the machine, name the location, and then legitimately have the employees who perform the lockout tagout put their name and signature on this document. You'll find this in your client center also within the program in our tab also that has safety forms to find that. And that will be something that is very helpful. It is simple as writing down the name of the, name of the machine, the location, having the employee put his name and signature, and then writing down the four to ten steps that it takes to lock out something. It is really that simple. And on a documentation perspective, we've just complied with Cal OSHA. The hard part really is getting your people to implement that and follow it. Isn't that always the case, Rick? Absolutely. So, so that's where the training comes in, which is a key element here. So the training, um, one of the VAR recommended lessons that you do annually is the lockout tagout lesson. That is more of a generic type of lesson that you should be doing with all of your employees so that they understand the importance of lockout, tagout, and what the general procedures are for that. But when it comes to the individual equipment, that's where you might want to have, if you're already doing your training once a month, you might only have two or three individuals that are working on certain uh, pieces of equipment, and that's where you want to train just those individuals and do additional training with them, and that's where... Uh, where our writing of the safety lessons uh, for you and customizing for you, if you have equipment that uh, we don't already have a safety topic on, let us know. We'll do the research. We'll check the Cal OSHA code. We will write that lesson for you so that you can have those individual trainings with those particular employees. Yeah, we put that service together about a couple years ago. We, we call it the Customized Lesson Service, and, and Rick is right. If you have a circumstance or some sort of machine, we will write some safety measures for you. It's not a how-to to use an oper a machine, but we can write some how, how to be safe with a machine uh, of lessons that will be really good for you. Let me address uh, uh, the enforcement side of it. 
you got to get your stomachs geared for this enforcement. If there is a problem and lockout tagout is in the first part, which is the writing of these forms, and then the last part is going to be the, the enforcement. A lot of the people that we meet with that are clients of ours, you guys have good stomachs. You're just like, yes, I can write people up and fire people if they do not obey these rules. Uh, I, I have no desire to go back to that ugly picture we just showed a few minutes ago. But remember, if you don't enforce it, the machines will enforce it at some point, And they're going to enforce it with maiming, killing, or, or slashing somebody. And so it's better to be enforced by you. Uh, you really got to have in place some sort of discipline policy when it comes to safety that the employees sign off on. Uh, I'm a conservative guy, so I go for the three strikes you're out rule. My gosh, if a man can't learn how to wear safety glasses or perform the right lockout tagout steps that I've already taught him on, and he has three warnings, he, he shouldn't be working with me anymore. But some people might be, uh, their stomach might not be prepared for that. So they might need a four strikes you're out. Or heaven's sakes, I hope you don't do this, but a ten strikes you're out. you got to find something that you're comfortable with so that you can get this program ready to go. Because having the written isn't good enough. Filling out the forms are not good enough. Doing all the training in the world is not good enough if you are not enforcing the problem, enforcing the lockout tagout, and have a system to do so. And, and, the, and the thing with the enforcement also, it usually only takes one or two people to be made an example of, and it doesn't even have to go to the level of, of somebody being terminated. Just even if, if you haven't been having write-up procedures in the past, you write somebody up, the word gets around. People don't want that on their record. People don't want to lose their jobs. They they start towing the line. We hear from people who say that, well, you know, that their employees don't want to conform, but you, you, you've you got to be the enforcer and make that happen. It is. There's a lot of people looking for work out there. I have a hard time believing you can't find anybody that won't obey the safety rules. Absolutely. All right. If you are not a client of ours and you've been on one of the select few to be lucky enough to be able to be invited to attend, please give us a call if you want a free on-site safety evaluation. That's all we'll say on that. All right, so this is a lockout tagout poster that we put together, Rick. So we're ready for uh, questions and answers at this point, but to go ahead and fill in a little bit of time while you uh, submit some more questions, this is a lockout tagout poster that we're uh, making available for you, and I will... Uh, Rick is pretty handy at popping this up on the screen for you so you can download this. Our, our, our people put these together for you, and if there is some sort of safety poster that you're looking for to remind your employees to do something, we would be glad also to have a recommendation that we'll create one custom made for you. That won't be a problem at all. So you can go ahead and download this for you, put it up in your break room. It, it's just an, it's just another thing. You know, constant reminders. When the people see this, uh, it, it just it just starts to sink in their in their mind over a period of time, and they're able to uh, to do the things that you want them to do in that area. That's right. That's why my wife always gives me notes all the time, reminding me what I should be and should not be doing, picking up things at the store for. It, it gets a little nutty out there. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started with the questions here. Um, first one here, drill presses. Do we, do we lock out when changing a drill bit? No. No, 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 no. When you're locking and changing out a drill bit, the word would be no. And the reason why I'm telling you no is because I have never seen a citation in the 24 years we've been doing this on somebody that uh, was injured by changing a drill bit, a bit and then Kalos you cited them for lockout tagout. No. But your people should be trained in how to use a drill press and how to change a drill bit. Next question. What about tools that are taken out of the tool room and taken into the production floor and not used? Does it need to be tagged out? Ah, oh, that's a good question. So it's not maybe a tool that is has gone bad and 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 you're not using it anymore, and you're it's not in your oh, tool room, oh, and you're storing it off to the side somewhere. Well, if you've got a piece of machinery or some sort of tool that is broken down or it's in in not in function anymore, yeah, you want to pull that off to the side and then put locked out, tagged out. But you're really putting out a service damaged so that people can see that this isn't just a temporary basis this is possibly you know it's out of service uh, and so on the lockout tagout f form and not the form the tag we had it, it had a, a few lines on it that said reasons you, you can put the reasons out of service you know not necessary don't need it or broken and you can do that 
And that's actually a critical thing, and I've actually seen yeah. uh, that instance where I, I met with a, with a uh, with a company that had been uh, inspected by Cal OSHA, and he had equipment that legitimately hadn't been used in years. But yep. the fact was that the plug was just laying there on the ground next to an outlet, or and a rogue employee yeah. could just pick that up and plug it in and use it. And uh, so, yes, you definitely want to tag out equipment that you're not using. Yep. Yep. So let's take a look at the next one here. It says, uh, any lockout tagout suggestions for equipment that moves frequently from work site to work site? Yeah, uh, if you have equipment that works, work, uh, moves work site to work site, the first thing is, uh, who are the people that are utilizing it? And if these guys are your, your, just your workers out there, then they just need to have it signed off. So um, y they need to lock and tag it out. So I, they, these, these equipment get energized in some fashion. Obviously, you don't have a breaker you're going to turn off, so you would use some sort of uh, the outlet box to, that goes over the head of the plug that we showed in one of the pictures that you can see that goes over and that locks it out in that fashion. Okay. Next question says, we have seven inch angle grinders that are used every day. When changing the grinding disc, should we lock out? You know what, I'm going to tell you yes on that because here's your problem. If, if anybody is changing that grinding disc and that thing turns on and you have a problem, I can guarantee you you're going to get a citation for not locking and tagging it out. So yes, you need to either unplug it and put a cap, a, a, a box around the outlet or, or if it is hardwired in, you, you need to have a shutoff right there. Okay, next question. It says, what about oven or refrigerators or blenders, small items like these? Well, if you've got a blender, you know that's a good question. I mean, uh, when it comes to blenders and ovens, like in a, in, are we talking like in a restaurant? You think, Rick? I, I would imagine, yeah, in, in a restaurant, maybe m mixing mixing bowls, different well, types. If you've of got a blender or or a, let's say a mixer, and it's a commercialized mixer, yeah, and you're going to change the blade on it, you want to unplug this thing. And uh, at the very least, unplug it. Now the question is, do I need to put a cap on it and go to that extent? Remember, if anybody gets injured, you're going to be cited eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. And so the reality of it is, you're just saying, do you want to take that chance? If you have somebody that's changing the blade on your industrial mixer a hundred times a day, and you're like Mike, by doing that, I'm going to create a bigger problem. Then, then I, I can see why me saying yes is going to be a, a factor. Now the question is. Are you going to run the risk? You guys are the business owners out there and, and, and have your, your people on the line. Overall, you can see how basic the code is. We read you the code, so yes uh, to, to that question. So, so the, the, the bottom line is, is if the, the equipment has the potential to injure somebody, yes. you, you, you really want to take that precaution because it, it literally does become a matter of if not of rather of when, not if. At some point, something will happen, right? And you're just going to be in a bad spot. You you might say you might unplug it and be done with it. Uh, if it's just going to be a couple minutes and your people are going to be there, you you have to see on this exact circumstance. If you if you have some more concerns about it still on that exact question, you just give us a call in the office and we'll book a time and I'll I'll come out personally and sit down and go over that machine with you and and give you more detailed answer. Okay, let's see here. Someone says, says the written program, every hand tool needs to have one? Well, a hand tool does not necessarily have any moving parts to it. So a hammer, no. A hand tool would not need that. That's why we didn't put any pictures of, of it. So like a hand tool, like a screwdriver, no. But if you're talking about a skill saw, unfortunately, yes. But that goes in line with a, a, a basic blender you need to. These are probably the lower scale, the lower end of the priority list when it comes to lockout, tagout, unless all you got is skill saws. But the reality is you want to work with the bigger machines first and then detail yourself as you go down. Okay, um, right now this looks to be our last question unless some more come in here. Uh, it says, what about equipment that we have for sale, like surplus saw or table saws? Uh, that it says, we have, do not use for sale signs on them. Do we need to have them tagged out too? If you have machines that are for sale and they're out there, and I would imagine you're not a Home Depot or a Lowe's, but they're in your shop where people, you have working skill saws and table saws and other equipment like that, and these just so happen to be for sale, yes, I would lock and tag these out so that employees know that they cannot utilize these if one of the others breaks down. 
Exactly. So that looks to be all the questions that we have. Um, remember, you will get a replay invite, so if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us. And uh, also in the, the replay, you can also ask questions. Those come straight to my uh, email. Michael, any closing comments? Let me just say that you got to fill these lockout tagout forms out for your, for your heavy machinery first and then work yourself down. Yes, you can get crazy about, do I need a lock and tag out a pencil sharpener? Well, it does have moving parts, and I do have to dump the ashes every once in a while. But you got to be within reason here. Consider what we're going to get cited for. What is somebody going to get injured on in that fashion? And so you really want to keep this in a perspective that is implementable. Start with your big, ugly machines first that can cause a lot of damage and then work through it as you go. Our uh, safety professionals, when they come to your facilities, you can also ask them uh, their opinions. And we go over this all the time with them on what is being cited and what is reasonable and what is a little crazy. But if the direct questions are, do I have to? Yeah, the law is clear. You, you got to. But when it comes to an implementation factor, you just know don't get crazy with it and don't walk away from this webinar thinking, my gosh, well, I'm not going to do anything because I've got to lock and tag out everything. Start with the big stuff first and let's work through it as slowly by slowly and, and, and it'll, everything will be all right. All right, folks, that's going to be a... Uh, a wrap for us today. Hope you can join us next month. We'll be sending out an email for our next topic. Until then, stay safe and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you, everybody, for your participation.